My guest today is Don Joseph Goey, who is a consultant to the Center for Spiritual Exchange, the official archive for the works of Anthony DeMello, who died in 1987. DeMello is regarded as one of the great spiritual minds of the 20th century, influencing the likes of Eckhart Tolle and Thomas More. DeMello's books have sold more than 2 million worldwide. Don recently extracted material from Anthony DeMello's archive and wrote the book entitled Stop Fixing Yourself, Wake Up, All is Well. This book reminds you that you don't have to fix anything. It's enough for you to be watchful and awake. Awareness becomes the grace that releases your reality for you to healthily grow and develop. Welcome to Lifeology. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. I am looking forward to this. You are um, in the same field as I am. You are a psychiatrist. I am a psychotherapist. So how is it for you to take all of your trainings as, as, a, um, as a physician and then translate that into more of a spiritual self-development sphere? Well, first of all, I'm not a, a psychiatrist. I've been in this oh. field for a very long time. Um, working with psychiatry and psychology Mm. and neuroscience. Um, And I'm one of those kind of people that integrates things. So Mm. I expose myself to uh, the field. This field that we're going to be addressing today is called the field of of, uh, psycho-spirituality. And it's the place in which neuroscience and psychology and spirituality, and by spirituality, I mean a practical spirituality, a life mm-hmm. based on principles, all come yes. together to give to produce this op- optimal result of a happy, peaceful human being who's uh, on the adventure of life and enjoying himself or herself. Yes, I actually really like that. I've never heard of psycho spirituality, and I. That's obviously your term, but I, I'm sure other people's term as well. But I'm going to coin that as well. Not coin. I'm going to use that as well because I. That's really the intersect with what I do. Uh, but I didn't know yeah, that was here actually in California is pretty popular. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> I'm here yeah. in Florida, so we haven't yet got the new. We haven't caught up yet. <laughs> <laughs> that is hysterical. Good to know. All right. Well, how? What drew you to um, to Anthony Demello's teachings? Well, it sort of fell upon me. You know, mm-hmm. I was. Um, directing an agency called the Center for Attitudinal Healing. It was a famous international agency working with people facing catastrophic life events. Mm. And so we were working with people who were um, really dealing with uh, very difficult life challenges, people who uh, were life-threatened by either cancer or some other serious illness, parents who had lost children. We worked in Mm. prisons with people serving, men serving life sentences who'd lost all hope. And uh, we were also sent by the Clinton administration to um, to Croatia and Bosnia to work in the refugee camps where people oh. were suffering from very severe post-traumatic stress oh from that gosh. genocidal war. And so mm. I was constantly delving into other approaches that dovetailed with the approach that we were doing, and one of the thing, one of the people I ran into was Anthony DeMello, and what really struck me about him was this notion of um, of uh, you don't have to fix yourself. You're, you know, it, it's essentially boils down to his point of view that you're not broken, you're not some problem to be solved. Your circumstances may be difficult. But your circumstances don't find you. They and oftentimes, you know, people think that if I got too much debt, there's something wrong with me. You know, if uh, mm-hmm. if I'm not succeeding like the guy next to me, um, I'm inadequate. And yeah. but what Demello has defined for us is if there's a problem um, in your life, in the way in which you you feel about yourself and about the world and about uh, the way about you're going about your life it has much more to do with the way you were programmed to believe that without some person or some result, uh, you cannot be happy. And it's a, mm. it's a false belief and it costs us dearly. There's only about 4% of the population um, that are actually completely happy, that define themselves as being completely happy, that whatever happens circumstantially, it doesn't, it doesn't cost them at the level of their happiness or at being at peace with themselves. And the irony is that for 96% of the rest of us is that we were born happy. We were mm-hmm. born free, but we've become trapped in our own limited thinking that's been programmed into us. We were born with an open heart 
that stress and fear so easily close. We were born gifted. Um, we're beings yeah. of immeasurable worth, but we often feel we're not good enough. We're often struggling with shame and guilt. Um, we we were born into a world, into a divinity of joy within us and surrounding us that's there to make our lives meaningful and beautiful and rich, but we become blocked from seeing it. And so from DeMello's point of view, it's like, uh, it's almost as if we were dragged up on stage and some hypnoti- <laughs> hypnotist hypnotizes to see what's not there and not see yeah. what is right there in front of our nose. You know, when you, mm-hmm. you if you read mm-hmm. the mystics who talk about being enlightened, they say, I couldn't believe it. It was all always there the whole time right in front of me. There was nothing I needed yeah. to do for it, but I didn't see it. And so that's what I got from DeMello. And I, I, I dive pretty deeply into him and, and found a wonderful consistency to his approach to waking up. It, by consistency, I mean, it works. You know, as a psychotherapist, yes. of course, you're looking for things to give your clients that you know will work if they, if mm-hmm. they, if they step into them. That, that's a challenge for your therapist. Yeah. But your <laughs> exactly. challenge is to make sure that what you're giving them is has efficacy. And, and, and Demelo yes. definitely had that for me. Yes. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1987, was it? Yeah. Yes. Something, yeah. Yes, he did. Some, some of my listeners... Some of my listeners may not know about him. I mean, I, I've been blessed to, know, to read about him, so I know more about him than probably some of my listeners. Would you like to give us more of his backstory of how he became the amazing, or is, was the amazing person that he is? Yeah, well, he was a Jesuit priest, but he was from India. He's Indian. Um, he uh, is noted for integrating, you know, Eastern and Western spirituality together. Um, uh, he influenced, as you said in the opening, some of the great spiritual thinkers of our time, Eckhart Tolle, Jusante, mm-hmm. Thomas More, uh, Paulo Coelho. Um, and even though he died in 1987, he's continued to be very popular. Uh, his books are, I, I can't even, I've lost count of how many mm-hmm. um, countries he's, he's published in. He sold more than 2 million books. And I think what makes him such a strong influence even after his death is because, as I said, his, his message really hits a, a bullseye. It's easy to yeah. integrate. Um, and he experienced an, you know, an awakening that he said revolutionized his life. And it happened when he was uh, in Calcutta and there was a rickshaw driver that mm. uh, picked him up every day at his hotel and he got to know him. And this man was as poor as dirt. And he had a family, he had a wife and children. He had tuberculosis. Uh, oh rickshaw gosh. drivers don't live very long because it's a really difficult job. Mm-hmm. And he was so poor, he had sold his body to to this uh, to this kind of unlawful group for like the equivalent of $10. And what they do is they break his body down to the skeleton and sell it to universities, right? That's how poor mm-hmm. he was. But DeMello right. said, this man was joyful. He was happy. He was peaceful. He uh, he connected with everyone and, and everything around mm. him. Just to, DeMello said just to be with him was to be in a vibration that was contagious. And um, DeMello looked at his own life and he said, this man who's dying quickly is more alive than I've ever been. And he wow. began to look into that more deeply, which led him to, to, to go outside of the cat, to take his Catholicism, but to go outside of it. And um, he, he was a wonderful integrator, a great integrator. And that's where he came up with his approach to awakening, which, uh, which he calls awareness. His whole approach is awareness centered. He says, it's enough for you to be simply be aware and awake to what's going on inside of you, the negative feelings, the, the judgments that you're making, without judging yourself, without even trying to change them. And just by the, and to begin to understand these have been programmed into you. You know, we've been mm-hmm. programmed to believe that if we work long and hard enough that and 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 attain all the things that they that we're supposed to attain out there in the outside world. In other words, we become a success to whatever degree we're capable of becoming. Out of that, someday happiness will follow. 
We'll be yeah. out. You know, yeah. when our ship comes in, we'll be happy. And, <laughs> you know, psychotherapists <laughs> and life coaches like one day. Exactly. And, you know, one day doesn't come until some one day you have a midlife crisis and you go, I'm successful, but I don't even know what happiness is. You know, I've been yeah, divorced yeah. twice. My kids, I don't mm -hmm. know my kids very well. My whole life has been focused on the outside. I have no connection with myself on the inside. It's what yeah. um, Tony Robbins called, you know, success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure and fulfillment comes from within. It, mm -hmm. Nothing of the world will ever fulfill you. I mean, it'll give you things. It'll give you elation. But how long do those last? They never last very yeah. long. The lasting happiness, the lasting fulfillment that we experience, that we're born to wake up to every day, that's inside of us. And we've lost contact with it. And so what DeMello is offering us is a way to rediscover it again. I love that. And the book, Stop Fixing Yourself, Wake Up All Is Well. Once again, this is from the archives of, of Anthony DeMello. What was, when you look through all the different things that he wrote, why was that particular aspect of the concept of wake up and stop fixing yourself? How did that, why did that resonate so much with you? Because I had uh, been uh, studying psychology. I had been in psychotherapy. I had gone to spiritual workshops. Um, and mm -hmm. it's not to say I didn't benefit from those things. I greatly benefited from those things. Of course. Um, for, for a number of years, I worked uh, closely with Carl Rogers. I, I greatly mm. benefit from working with yeah. Carl. Um, but I had to admit at some point in my life that I wasn't, hadn't improved as much as I had set out to. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't quite understand that. And, and DeMello really spoke that, to that for me that um, he, he actually was basically saying a number of things that Carl Rogers was saying, which is, first and foremost, get in touch with your feelings. You know, don't, don't yeah. be afraid of them. It may begin with just simply not being afraid of being afraid or not being mm -hmm. depressed by, by being depressed. Yeah. And so yeah. what, you know, DeMello is saying, he's, he's given us a four-step process of, um, that deprograms all of that programming that we've had, that we've undergone through our families, through schools, through as we step out into the world, mm -hmm. that your fulfillment is out there in the world, you know, yeah. and that belief that I cannot be happy until I get that girl or get that guy. I can't be happy till I get that degree. I can't be happy that when I ask people in workshops to sit down and make a list and uh, uh, that fill in the blank for, I cannot be happy until or unless, and then list those conditions You'd be amazed at how fast people start making the list and how long their list is. <laughs> I'm and sure then they I are. tell them, now look, <laughs> look at that list and behold your suffering because you're suffering yeah. from these things. Because as soon mm. as you get one of them, you get one of them, you either get bored with them or you become anxious that you'll lose them or you've mm. moved on to the next thing you're anxious yeah. about. But it's a prescription for anxiety, it's a pre yeah. prescription for d depression. And so, what DeMello is saying, bring all that into awareness. This is how you get deprogrammed from, from that illusion that you were programmed into. It's because, you know, he, he's saying what you're aware of, you control and what you're unaware of, you know, that's going to eventually control mm -hmm. you. Yeah, so exactly. So awareness a lot of it's like allows you to see all that. Yeah, it's true. And a lot of that is like spinning plates. You know, you're, you spin this plate and this plate and you're searching and searching and trying to keep everything afloat or aloft and spinning that all that energy is going externally and not what's inside of you to be able to focus on what does, you exactly. know, what are the things I actually like about myself? What are the things I don't like about myself? And so being okay with that. I always like to tell people that everything in our life, every event we've experienced is like a jigsaw puzzle. So every event is like a jigsaw puzzle piece. And when they link together, that allows for you to be who you are today. And so there's some things I love about myself and some things I'm working on, but I like myself. And so when we look at all those different events, the things that I thought brought me joy, the things that I thought didn't bring me joy, whatever it might be, those things become who I am. And so I get to choose what I look like today based off of what I focus on. And I just like, you know, I'm sure you as well. I'm okay that I'm not the best at something. And I'm okay that I'm pretty good at this. I'm okay that this situation, you know, didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Because when you can recognize that you are okay, and we all have our own uh, design and our own purpose and a plan for each one of our lives. When we recognize that, then we define the direction our life goes. Just like, you know, obviously as, as Anthony DeMello said, instead of our situations or people telling us what we can and cannot become. 
Yes, that's right. And, you know, what Anthony Noella was trying to get people to do is wake up. And so the question is, wake up to what? And to wake up to, to the natural state that you uh, that leads to the experience you, yeah. you were born to have. And as I said, we were born happy. We were born at peace. We were born beings of immeasurable worth. We were born creative. We were born joyful um, and, and with the capacity to pursue whatever is most meaningful of us. And we get talked out of all of that. Um, yeah. And so the first thing that he, Anthony DeMello is saying that you need to do is you need to get in touch with what's, what's your, what's going on? What's your emotional experience first and foremost, mm-hmm. and in particular, what, what's the negative feelings that, that you're having that you're usually not aware of, or that you tend to push away or you tend to repress uh, feelings like nervousness, tension, stress, feelings like waking up gloomy and mooding mm-hmm. and carrying that in today feelings of shame when you make a mistake may, maybe even feelings of self-hatred that got programmed into you by an abusive parent um yeah. or that you feel life is pointless all that kind of thing is going on spinning in the background it's all been programmed into you you're not even aware of it so debel is saying get in touch with those feelings first Observe the thoughts you're thinking that produce the upset that, that you're having, the upset you're feeling, leading to this narrowing of your perspective that turns into the attitude that really disempowers you, turns into pessimism, turns into thinking yeah. you're not good enough. Mm-hmm. And then step back from all of it while you're still in it. You know, we're, amb- we're, we're our consciousness is really ambidextrous. We can be in two places <laughs> at the same time. You try yeah. for three, it's a little more difficult, but you can be <laughs> in the funny. middle of the emotional turmoil that, that your thought system has generated for you at the moment that you actually believe is who you are at the moment. And you can uh-huh. also step back from it and watch what's going on. And as you step back, um, all you're really doing is, is watching the suffering that you're in. And, you know, the of his, his approach is, Make it like you're watching your best friend, because if you're watching your best friend, you're not going to judge them. You're going to have some degree of compassion. Mm -hmm. And that's Mm -hmm. an important part of this step is to not judge yourself for your negativity, not judge yourself for 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 judging or for even for condemning yourself. Or if you are doing that, observe how you do that and step back from that. And then a second step is to acknowledge that this turmoil, this commotion, this negativity, this is in me. It got programmed mm-hmm. into me, but it's not mm-hmm. necessarily in reality. Reality yes. is neutral. You know, if you planned a picnic um, and it rained um, and you get angry at the rain, rain had nothing to do with it. You're getting angry because you got disappointed. You think your yeah, happiness exactly. depends on being able to have a rainless day in which you can have your picnic. Your happiness doesn't depend on that. All mm-hmm. it depends on you getting quiet within yourself and letting it show up. And his third step is to understand that this turmoil that you're in, this upset you're in, whether it's depression or anxiety, um, it seems like everything stems from those two major emotional upsets, um, that it'll pass. Everything in life passes. You yourself, your your very being will pass into another reality. Um, But the... If anything passes, nothing passes quicker than emotion if you allow it. But when you indulge it, when you believe, if, if you're stressing because you think this person upset you, this person's laying some kind of pressure on you that's upsetting you, and, and they're to blame for it. Not, now you're you're in illusion, and in that illusion, you're going to ruminate, and in that rumination, mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to exacerbate the upset that you're in. But if you just sit back from it, get in touch with it, come to understand what's happening with you as a form of the programming you receive, it'll pass. And when it passes, it's it's quite miraculous for somebody to discover that, like what they thought was so real and had so much um, power over them actually, poof, disappears. And when it does, Mm -hmm. now you're a choice. You know, that very thing you were talking about. Mm-hmm. Now you're, previously you weren't a choice. Previously you were neurologically, it was your brain using you and the way your mm-hmm. brain was wired yeah. for upsets. We're, we're wired for that. We're wired for fear. And so once that passes and you're in this sort of quiet place, the prescription is just become quiet. 
just be silent with yourself. Let everything mm -hmm. go for a moment. And what you will observe naturally arising within you, your experience, is a feeling of contentment, a feeling of happiness, a little bit of joy. And the, you, you do this every day for two weeks. And at the end of two weeks, that little bit of joy, that little bit of happiness, that feeling of being at peace with yourself will expand, will enlarge. And then, you know, it Everything will continue to go on as it was. This will sure, pass. You'll be back it. in the thick mm -hmm. of it. But mm -hmm. your practice is awareness. And people often ask me, so how long do I need to do this awareness practice during the day? And I said, it's it's not something you're doing. It's something you're being. You're being aware. And it's to be exactly. aware all day long. And then they say, well, how long do I have to do it before it all kicks in? I said, you just do it for the rest of your life. <laughs> it, yeah. and, and what awareness does, awareness awakens you. Damello has this famous nice. quote, um, awareness releases reality. That reality of what is in your true nature releases that reality to change you. You don't change anything. In fact, the mm -hmm. more you try to change yourself, the, the, the worse it gets. And so yeah. that's what appealed to me about DeMello. And I've incorporated that in the center of everything I do, all the uh, the workshops I do, all the coaching I do, um, all the books I write. That's the centerpiece because awareness, if you, you study the mystics, they're unanimous about two things. One is that awareness is the way. And the second mm -hmm. thing is, is that the other thing that they're uh, 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 unanimous about is that all is well. All is well when you are. You know, the world yes. can be going to hell in a handbasket, but if you're okay, all is well around you. Yes. You know, you, you, you come up with the resources to deal with whatever you have to deal with until you return back to that center place within yourself. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. those, are, those are two centerpieces that this book is about. Stop fixing yourself. Understand all is well. Um, wake up. How do you wake up? Become aware. Become aware in this very simple way. I absolutely love that. Unfortunately, our time is up. You you have said so much there that I know when my listeners purchase this book, once, once more, stop fixing yourself, wake up, all is well. Um, based on the teachings of Anthony DeMello, I know that it's going to really enlighten them and awaken them so much. Um, you know, I, I love the fact that you don't have to fix yourself because we'll always, like like, like you were saying, there's always something that's going to be better than you or quote better than you or this or that. And when we try and change or try and um, try and chase after that, once again, you're never going to be truly who you are, who you could be, who you should be rather, but because you'll always be chasing someone else's dream. Yes, they can find, uh, if they want to find the book, Stop Fixing Yourself. There it is. That's what it looks like. They can get it at Amazon. It's, um, it, the price just dropped. So this is a good time to give. It's also a wonderful gift. And if they want to get some of the materials on Anthony DeMello, they can go to our website, DeMello, D-E-M-E-L-L-O, center.com, all in the word, DeMelloCenter.com. Lots of free resources there that they can access. Wonderful. Well, my listeners also know that if they cannot find this information in any other place, simply go to the show notes at jamesmillerlifeology.com and I will link you with this, with this book, Stop Fixing Yourself, Wake Up All as Well. Thank you so much, Don Joseph Goey, for being a wonderful guest on my show. I truly appreciate all your expertise. Thank you so much for having me. 